Hello, Marcus the Biome Mechanic DeMarco here. Um, I just came up with an idea. Um, watching Robert Murray Smith's video on perpetual motion, which I will link to below. Um, we got in a discussion, uh, a few of us, about perpetual motion and Earth's magnetic field, the rotation of the Earth, and so on, and how it's, you know, using that to make energy, you know, and it's definitely a good thought, and uh, I have been thinking of this for a while, I came up with an invention a while ago about using the moon to, as the moon-earth relationship as a generator to generate electricity, maybe put a few coils of wire around the earth and let the moon um, spin around it and its magnetic field <coughs> induce a current that we could tap into um but it turns out i mean i i, I can still uh, revisit that and think about that but it turns out that if you're using the earth's magnetic field um if you're using the earth's magnetic field maybe if you're using the moons it wouldn't uh, matter maybe that would still work but using the earth's magnetic field at all to do work what you're really doing is draining the rotational inertia or the rotational momentum of the earth you know so you're basically slowing down the rotation you might be thinking <clears throat> well how does it slow down the rotation we're not using the rotation we're using the earth's magnetic field well well you just need to think of where does the earth's magnetic field originate from you know if you just type that in google i'm sure you will find that <clears throat> The Earth's magnetic field originates from the Earth's rotation. It has to do with um, liquid metals and whatnot in the core of the Earth inducing a magnetic field as it rotates. So we can't use the Earth's magnetic field. We can't use the Earth's rotational energy. Well, you might be asking, well, why not? You know, the Earth <coughs> has so much rotational energy. If we tap into it a little bit, it's not going to make a difference. Well, I would actually beg to differ. Um, if you look at Mercury and Venus, they no longer have any rotation. They are tidally locked to the sun, just like our moon is tidally locked to us. And, uh, yeah, we don't want to end up like Mercury or uh, Venus um, because they have such extreme temperature variations. One side's like 400 Celsius, the other side's like negative 400 Celsius. So it would be very uninhabitable if if the Earth ever lost its rotation. And if you look at it, um, the planets that get tidally locked are the ones that are closest to the Sun first, and then at, and then and then as you get farther away from the Sun, they lose their rotation slower. <clears throat> so we're next. I mean, Mercury and Venus are tidally locked they've lost rotation so earth is next now if you look at what the rate of our slowing is it's about one second per day every 1.5 years so we're actually really slowing down really fast if you look at the average over the last 2700 years the rate of slowing is much slower than that which means that we are accelerating our slowing so we don't want to be using the Earth's magnetic field or rotation to produce energy because then we're just speeding up the inevitable inhospitality, uh, inhospitality of our planet to life. And we're going to have to move to Mars. So how can we get free energy <coughs> that doesn't speed up our fate of destruction? Well there's another thing that's going on and that is the wobble of the earth now just like a top wobbles um, also the earth wobbles as it rotates now the wobble as far as I'm concerned at this point the wobble is not beneficial the wobble actually makes us lose rotation faster so we want to minimize the wobble as much as possible now, if we want to stop the wobble, the way we do that is we use the wobble to produce energy, to produce work. The more work we make the wobble do, 
the less the wobble will become. So eventually, if we use up all the wobble energy, the Earth will just be spinning in a nice, perfect um, alignment with the axis. And this would actually delay the tidal locking. So we'd actually be doing something beneficial if we um, used up wobble energy. Now you might be asking, well, how would anyone use up wobble energy? I mean, it's hard enough to use Earth's rotational energy or Earth's magnetic field. It's hard enough to do that. How would you use the wobble energy? Well, it's actually incredibly easy, and it's easier than using up the Earth's magnetic or rotational energy. You might think that when you watch water going down a drain, that it is doing so, and it's spinning, it's creating a vortex, and it's doing that by the Coriolis effect, the same effect that um, makes hurricanes spin the way they do. But you would be very perplexed because hurricanes in the northern hemisphere spin counterclockwise, according to the Coriolis effect. However, water goes down the drain clockwise, the opposite direction that the Coriolis effect would predict. Now, why is this? Scientists have said that it's not Coriolis effect um, that causes water to drain. That is just the way that the water goes in and it carries its momentum with it to produce the spinning. Well, this is half true. It's not the Coriolis effect because the Coriolis effect cannot affect such a small system. That's true. But what's untrue is that the water just goes whichever way it has momentum. Because if the water has zero momentum and it's just standing still, you unplug a drain plug, water's going to go down clockwise every time. You know, so there is obviously a force making it go clockwise. Now, what is that force? It can't be the Coriolis because it goes the opposite direction of Coriolis. Well, there's no other force that we know of except for the wobble. Now, which way would the wobble predict that the water would go down? Well, clockwise for the northern hemisphere. If you look online, the wobble of the Earth moves in a clockwise um, orientation. You know, wobbling like this. Clockwise. I don't know if it's backwards on the video, but now if, you know, my head's the Earth's axis and it's wobbling clockwise, it's going to be pushing that whatever is on the surface of the Earth is going to be push, going to pushing it around in a clockwise direction. So that's where the vortex is coming from. Now, Tesla used hydroelectricity to produce energy. And what he did is he used waterfalls to turn a turbine. And this works pretty good. I mean, in theory, you could have a 100% efficient system where you let the water fall, you collect the energy, you pump it back up, you let it fall, collect energy, pump it back up, let it fall, collect energy. And if you have a 100% efficiency, you're not going to lose any energy. Now, how can we use the wobble to give us free energy? Well, it's pretty easy. Instead of letting the water flow down a waterfall in a, in a line like Tesla did, what we need to do is let the water vortex on its own. So instead of it going down a waterfall, we make it go down a pipe. It's just that simple. Now, as the water vortexes from the Earth's wobble as it goes down the pipe, you put a fan, um, or a, a, I don't know what to call it, a, a propeller in the water, in the vortex, hooked to a generator, and you use that vortex to produce work. And then you can also do Tesla's way and have it produce more work as it falls, converting the potential energy into kinetic energy. However, the vortex has nothing to do with Earth's potential energy. Potential energy is not affected by the vortex. So you can sap energy out of the vortex and it's not going to use up any of the gravitational potential energy. All it's going to use is the energy of the Earth's wobble. Totally free energy. So in theory, you could get more energy by letting the water vortex, spin your generator, and then fall down, collecting the gravitational potential and the wobble energy you will get more work out of that than 
than than uh, the work it took to pump it up. So you could pump water up into a basin and then let it flow down, pump it back up, let it flow down, pump it back up, let it flow down. The more times you do it, the more energy you get profit. So it's totally free energy. And the only thing that you're using up is the Earth's wobble, which is good because the wobble is bad. So that's all. Free energy from the Earth's wobble, no negative impact, totally sustainable. I mean, in theory, it could run out, but even if it did run out, we would just have a perfectly smooth rotating planet that will rotate longer than if it were wobbling and losing rotational energy that way. So that is all. And now you know how to make free energy. Go out and let's make some free energy and save the Earth. Thank you very much.